see the sharing screen. Oh, I thought I did. Wow, amazing. Meeting now streaming live on YouTube. Check us out. <laughs> Allow our participants to share screen. Yeah, it's on, man. Yep, I can do that. Thank you. The sharing screen. Oh, oh, I thought I did. Wow, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it turns off, eh? <laughs> uh, so it has like a couple, couple seconds. Yeah, back. apparently it's 20, 20 seconds behind. Okay, okay. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if we do something really bad, we can quickly press stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, also welcome. Um, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce your name because I'll get it say, wrong. Abhishek. Abhishek, okay. Yeah, hey, I'm hi. guessing. I'm totally guessing. Yes, yes, that's, that's correct. Very, very well pronounced. Yeah. Oh, Thank excellent. Welcome. Nice to see you guys. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Cool. I just turned off, I just um, hid the cards for the non-video people. If anyone's brave enough to put their video on, then they'll have their face plastered all over the internet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Does your screen sharing work, Lennon? Uh, yes. I'm going to try. Is that a good size? Yeah, that's good, mate. Cool. That looks good. Might turn the ding dong off too, hey? Every time someone comes in and out of the room. <laughs> well, it adds, it adds excitement, <laughs> I guess. Mm, she don't know how to do it now. Not sure. Hey! Welcome. Hi guys. I'm sick. How are you? I'm great. How are you guys? Pretty okay. good. Good. What time is it there? Uh, ten o'clock in the morning. It's very yeah, reasonable. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. So reasonable. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. How about your time? You're in the same zone, you two? Yes, yeah. we are in the same zone. We are eight o'clock in the night, although it looks very, very bright outside. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's what light here until eight thirty or something now. Longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I might just show everyone my view anyway. It's really good. Yeah. So outside is like the uh I'm doing a bad job, but outside is Melbourne City. Great. Pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice view. But I guess Dragon, where you are, is it? light some t some parts of the year like really late like crazy oh, yeah. late yeah yeah uh, it's uh, it's by the end of the summer uh i think or in the beginning of the summer shit i've been living here for th almost 30 years i still can't <laughs> remember but it's like it's very bright until like 10 30 in the evening wow wow sometimes 11 and yeah. uh some some people have difficulties sleeping, you know, yeah. because uh, they go to bed way too too late, and then uh, and then it's very bright early early in the morning. Yeah, as yeah. Well. So yeah. everybody's got shades uh, in in Sweden, especially in 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 the north. I'm in the south. Okay. If you look at the map of Sweden or a map of Europe. I'm much closer to Copenhagen, Denmark, yeah. Germany, that part than I'm uh, in Sweden. Sweden is like a three point five thousand kilometers long wow wow right? so it's like a yeah you say you live in the middle of sweden and you still have like two thousand kilometers to go <laughs> to reach the northern border yeah you know, the, yeah but i've been yeah. in all parts of sweden actually i've been way way north in this uh, space uh, laboratory in kiruna which was amazing yeah i was even uh, play playing for the uh, uh oil platform workers uh, when Oops. they had like you know music evening so we, we, wow. we were we flew there with a helicopter <laughs> or uh, on the north sea it, it was just amazing that's so cool yeah i've watched yeah. a few dramas that are set um i think not yeah. in sweden maybe norway but like right up the top there where the oil rigs are and yeah yeah man it's it's it seems like it's, such a beautiful part of the world yeah it is fantastic i mean uh, one of my goals when i retire one day 
is going uh, to to do this uh, bolt cruise uh, over Norway because it's a very oh, wow. well known route where you just visit all these fantastic places uh, and yeah. the boat is going through the glaciers and all that. It's like uh, wow. scary, fantastic. Yeah, amazing, amazing. But it was scarier to, to, to fly over, but I believe I was mildly intoxicated by alcohol when we flew over. Wow. <laughs> be, be, because if you're reasonable, you're flying over the ice, 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 and nothing for about an hour. Mm. You don't even wow. think like, what if the helicopter crashes? I mean, there, there are no parachutes. There, I mean, we were like, uh, you can't think about that know. stuff. You just no, gotta. No, can't. <laughs> no, no. I, I was thirty something then, and then it was like, yeah, who cares? You know, we well, got you know, a couple of whiskeys in us before yeah. we flew, and then we were free that first evening anyway. So I thought, well, I'm not going to be working, so let's have some fun. And then we flew over and then we woke up next morning and went out on the deck. It's, and that's also a sight to see nothing but yeah. ice around you everywhere. Yeah. But it's like yeah. a city. Wow. All, all platforms are like a yeah. city for the, of the known. It's incredible. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. You better get us let it started, Lennon. <laughs> get this right. right. Well, it, Otherwise, it, it, we're going to start telling, telling stories of traveling. You know? <laughs> well, it, it, <laughs> exactly. If if anything, I you put it in a timeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh, go on. No, 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 I was just going to say I really appreciate that. Um, I think without COVID, would never um, reach to someone like Dragon or anyone else. Yeah. Like, probably outside of Australia, yeah. and that's that's incredible, really. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty great. Um, yeah. Cool. I'm going to share my screen and do our usual bits. And for anyone that's watching, um. Today we're trying a new thing. We are live streaming on YouTube as well. Um, so that'll be that'll be great. It's a good little experiment we run. Um, and before we get started, uh, I like to do acknowledgement of country. Um, I like to begin by acknowledging that I'm hosting this event from the Royal Warren country and pay my respect to their elders, past, pre present, and future. Cool. Um, so if this is the first time you ever come to Notion Australia's events, um, we are a local Notion community, maybe not that local, <laughs> um, for Australia and time zone neighbors. Uh, and the reason we started this was because Tim and I find all of the major Notion events were happening in North America. And that time zone was not very friendly to um, people around us. So hence, um, this event. Um, what you're looking at is our website built on Notion. Um, URL is at the top. It's notionaustralia.co. Um, and then on this page, you will always be able to find what's coming up next. So today's session is all about the new timeline feature in Notion. And Tim is going to present three different or demonstrate three different examples um, to us on how he used them and how you can use them. Just super exciting. Um, followed by a, a section for past events replay. We've done um, six major events so far for the past six months, really. We started in May. Um, and then we've done a couple of build with me session or build with us session. Seems not to be able to settle on a name yet, but um, this is the fourth session and this will be the last Zoom session of the year. Um, you can click on all of these links. We'll link you back to um, either Crowdcast events or YouTube channel. Um, and doing a little ad for ourselves. Um, while we are doing live here, you can also try to subscribe on our channel so you won't miss any um, past events or future events that we're going to do. Um, and we've previously made some templates. You can find them here. It's all free. Um, some FAQs, if it, it is the first time you use Notion, you're interested in where should I start? What are the good videos? They're here. And you can always email us if you have specific question that you're stuck on. Um, I'm not going to go through details here, but it's Tim and Lennon teaming it up. Um, and then um, Tim runs his own Notion consultancy. Um, if you have any tough challenges, come to Tim. And I'm just here um, for the ride. And um, if you're ever interested in contributing to um, Notion Australia, if you want to be a guest speaker, um, you want to be a Q&A panelist, or you want to show um, your cool templates in session like this, or you want to run events with Tim and myself together, or really anything Notion related, you have good ideas, feel free to 
send us emails, um, and emails at the bottom. Um, and finally, um, to stay in loop of everything, you can also sign up our newsletter. Um, we post usually weekly. There's no spam. We don't really do any ads apart from for our events. Um, and check out Fruition if you ever need to build your own website and host it on Notion and your own domain. So that's the normal show. I'm going to hand over to Tim now. It's Tim's show today. And we'll talk. Let's take a look at the timeline. I'm going to stop sharing. Cool. Thanks, mate. Uh, I'm going to start sharing. So, oh, not the cheat sheet. I would not share that. <laughs> Give away all my secrets. Um, there are no secrets. But I'm going to assume that uh, people are sort of familiar enough with uh, like Notion databases and the basic Notion tools. And we're going to dive into um, the timeline view. So <clears throat> if people uh, are new to Notion or haven't kind of followed it too closely, um, this will be all new. But I think some people will have seen it. So um, for those of you who are in the call, Please feel free to jump in and ask questions. I like it to be casual. I'd rather not just monologue at you for the next half an hour. So um, if you've got extra things to add in, um, ideas, uh, yeah, bits I've missed, please um, please do. Um, so I want to start, I've got three um, different sort of examples. Um, the Christmas party one is super basic and I've, as you just saw, I put a table together with some content in it so that we can just build one. Um, to start with and show you how the basic bits work. I've got a home renovation template um, that's been out in the wild for a little while, but it's got um, a series of timeline views built in. And then I did something that I thought was cool the other day in a crypto workspace that I use um, and uh, found a way to kind of incorporate the timeline there. So we'll have a look. So hopefully it will get more advanced as we go along. Um, but like I said, feel free to ask questions. Um, and if you don't want to talk, that's okay. Just pop them in the chat. Um, and um, we can follow them that way. On the off chance, Lennon, that someone has found us on YouTube, do you want to monitor that chat too? I hadn't yep. thought about that. But... Yep, I have the window open, and oh, we've actually got two people watching, probably us. Hey, look at that. <laughs> YouTube sensation. Um, okay, so I just made a pretend uh, Notion Australia Christmas party, and... Uh, we can say that the invite list is done because anyone who's here in the call is invited to our Christmas party. Um, but really all I needed was a database with some info in it with some dates. So to add a timeline view, obviously we go to add view and we say timeline. So this was the sixth um, of the views and kind of hopeful that they'll keep thinking about new ways to add more. But for now, um, let's add this in here and just have a like a really basic brief walkthrough of, of what it is. Um, so sorry if this is kind of teaching you to suck eggs. Um, but you can see here in the timeline view, it's it's actually two views in one. I think it's helpful to realize that this is the table view and, and this is the timeline view. So um, all the pages are presented just like they are in all the other views as kind of rows across the page. And so you can see here, we've got just the name field um, in the table view, and then we've got the name field displayed in the timeline view. Uh, we can turn these things off and on. So the, we can show or hide that table. Um, and again, once you get into sort of more complex use cases, you start to see why these are useful, but we can also turn on and off the properties um, in the table and, and in the timeline view. So, uh, yeah, different scenarios, you're going to want to use different things. Um, obviously, there's not much point showing the dates, um, but in a later example, I'll show you kind of why you might want to use uh, the, the table specifically. But I think we'll ditch it for now um, and just show the timeline view itself. Um, and then you can see over here, uh, we've got the names of the pages and then the people who we've assigned to it. So as always, when you create a new view, you just get, I don't know, they need to work in some pretty cool AI to think, I think to sort of help work out how you might want to use this, but this is all completely out of order. So the timeline view is like all the others. You've got filtering options, you've got sorting options. 
So let's turn a sorting option on to make this make a little bit more sense. Um, we obviously want things to be in the order of the start date. Um, so you can scroll side to side um, based on, you know, if, if we needed to go wider. So I can't at the moment because all my pages are within this view. But you can see here, um, this is our time frame periods. So it scales actually really beautifully depending on um, like, you know, the, the, I guess the scale that you want to look at. So we're looking at this in a pretty useful view here um, because we're saying we want to be able to see everything across the span of a month. But if we wanted to zoom out and look at it across a whole year, um, then we could do that as well. And obviously in bigger projects, you would do that. And you can go all the way down to really granular, you know, by the hour, it's actually even kind of less than the hour. Um, but of course, that's not so useful <laughs> for something like this. So um, I also want to show you that you, you can move these around uh, in, in this timeline view itself. So we can pick them up and move them uh, if we wanted to do them on different days. And you can actually increase the size of them as well. So that's increasing the start time and the end time. Now, if we pop in here, um, like the calendar view and um, what else does this? The board view, you have this, um, like in this case, it's timeline by in the other, in the calendar view, it's calendar by, but you get to select which of the properties um, you are using. And so uh, you are using to, to set up the view. So here, the, the reason these are a little bit awkward at the moment is because I had separate start and end dates. And so we, we want the start date to be determined by the start date and the end date to be determined by the due date. So now we have a, uh, a view that reflects a little bit more like what our table view was here. Put our invite list together, plan a menu. Here the, they're all in order. And if we go back to our timeline view, uh, we've got the same. So, one of the properties that might be more useful in this view would be to turn the whether it's done on um, or not, just a simple checkbox. And of course, like all the views, if we move the properties around in this view, it changes how they look. Uh, so that's a much nicer view to be able to tick them off, seeing them at the front there. Um, and it just puts a nice little person's icon instead of their name. Lennon, I've got you on planning the menu, mate. I hope uh, your cooking is better than mine. So, I'll try. Um, <laughs> yeah. So pretty simple. Um, and when you've got, you know, like a really nice, you know, that, like I think this is a really easy way um, to, you know, to, to plan a project um, or something really basic like this just to set it up. It's if you've already got existing views where you have dates and you've got, you know, um, events or you know, tasks that cascade over time. It's a really nice way to look at them. I use it a little bit uh, in my own task management. Um, mostly I use a calendar, but sometimes if I'm trying to um, see something over um, a time span, um, the calendar view is a little bit pokey and you can only look at sort of one whole month at a time. This is a really nice way to say, okay, actually show me the week and then I can see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and actually get a sense of what the week looks like. Um, I'm going to post a link, but um, Danny, who is uh, often pops into these events, he made a YouTube video like a whole bunch of people did. And one of the things that I, he did that was really helpful, I thought, was um, he went through, uh, if you're in, you know, each view, how long the default event that it creates is. So if you're in the hours view, for instance, and we say make a new page, um, this new page has a default time span of one hour. Um, and they each have a different one. So he goes through that, which is pretty handy. Um, but that is also worth pointing out is that to add a, a new page straight in here, you can just click wherever you want it um, and it will pop in there and then you can edit it. Um, let's just say, oh, we, we, should have, we should have an after party probably. It's gonna go late. Uh, so we can just we can you can pop it straight in there. Oh, Ray Ching, she can be the she can be the organizer. All right, so 
I think that's it for the basics. Um, as you can see, this this feature that allows you to set the time span is super useful and it was a bit disorienting. Notion doesn't really have another um, view that has a um, element like this in it. So um, if you're not yeah familiar with that in the interface, but once you get a handle on it, it allows you to get great perspective on time. I actually didn't notice this drop down at all. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, I, I haven't realized that. <laughs> yeah. Now, super useful if you're looking at things over a big span of time. Um, and I imagine I haven't done this yet, but I imagine if you went a bit crazy and you really built uh, like a proper Gantt chart into it that actually had you know big projects over time, but then um, you know smaller tasks within it. Um, yeah, you would really need to be able to zoom out and see the big view so you could plan the big rocks over time and then zoom in and see the, you know, smaller tasks. Um, I've just used it, yeah, to span whether I want to, if I'm only working on something that's just for one week or whether I'm working on something for a whole year. I'm actually building a, um, a really cool workspace at the moment for an urban farm in the States. And uh, the timeline feature came out as we were building. And so I've been able to work in, we're doing, um, we're basically, it's going to be amazing when I finish the damn thing. Um, it, it tracks the, the growth of crops um, and everything that happens to them. It's a certified organic farm. So they really need to track everything all the way through. And one of the um, bits of data that we're tracking is like, you know, the, the date obviously that things get planted um, and then, uh, it automatically calculates the date that things will be available to harvest. So as we started putting data in, you get this kind of working, there's real crops that are, you know, that are growing. Um, and because we were able to extrapolate out what the harvest dates are, you can look at a timeline view and you can see which vegetables are going to be available at which times. And you can really see the farm kind of in the timeline view, the different um, crops that are available. And you can sort of zoom out to see a whole year of what's going to be able to be harvested at a certain time and therefore to be sold. Um, and so, yeah, it's a pretty impressive way of visualising the data that uh, we didn't have in Notion before. All right, uh, let's leave the Christmas party. Um, and hopefully after the Christmas party, we won't have to renovate the house. Um, but I guess if it gets really rowdy. Uh, so this is a home reno template that I built and I've sort of got nested um, timelines in it. So um, you can see here, this is a timeline view of the projects database. So these up here are all um, the, I think they're the, yeah, they're all the active um, projects. And so you can see we're looking at the renovations database and this is another view on that same database. So we're using linked views of databases. This is the renovations project again, but we're looking at it as a timeline. So we zoomed out, we're looking at it as a whole year. Um, and I think, yeah, we had start and finish dates again. Um, and so each project is represented here and you can see, you know, which room of the house it was in and uh, yeah, whether it's complete or whether it's current, um, and the other thing I want to show you here, which is quite a useful feature, and it's in the calendar view too, but I think it's probably something not many people have noticed, is when you're looking at a calendar, um, an entry in your database that doesn't have a date, um, when you hover over the menu here, it will it tells you, oh, hang on, this item doesn't have a date. And so if you want to add that date, you just need to click it and it will pop straight in to where you are now, and then you can obviously... Um, move it around. Oops, what did I do there? Yeah, uh, and it's changing because of the sort. Um, so that's really useful if you've got a database of things and you want everything to have a date. If you actually look at it in this view, you can give things a date and sort of, you know, just pick them up and move them and put them exactly where you want them to be um, right there in the moment. So I think in the template, the SPA didn't have a date because it's a pipe dream project, not a real one. I think I probably need to fix my shower base before I go and build a spa. Um, so one of the things that was cool that we did in this project is obviously we've got the timeline view here looking at the overall project, but then if you jump in to one of the actual projects inside um, using a template for the projects database, 
And so inside um, the project itself, then you've got a list of, well, this one's not so useful because all the jobs are finished. But actually, let's go and have a look at one that's, oops, supposedly uh, in play. All right, this is the coffee bar that it's not really in, in process. Most of these projects are mine, by the way, um, real things that I did, but the coffee bar, it's, it's also in the pipe dream field. Uh, so I've got a whole bunch of tasks with real, or, you know, actual dates. Um, and just looking at them in the board view there, but here we go. I don't know why I can't uh, scroll sideways. I'm in the browser, it does something a little different. But um, so now we're not looking at projects in the timeline view, we're looking at the tasks for this particular project. Uh, so yeah, again, just a really helpful way to be able to sit back and have a look and think, okay, you know, this project is gonna happen over this period of time. Um, and you can sort of see the start and end dates and visualize it in that different way. Um, the only issue with this is when Notion released the feature, they did something that was a little bit controversial. They um, put a limit on um, the amount of timeline views that you're allowed to use. So I haven't heard that this has changed. I think I still see the pop-ups in, um, in the app in my workspace screaming at me that I've got too many timeline views. Um, but the, the limits aren't hard. So I think I must have about 20 <laughs> timeline views spread across my workspace. But in theory, um, a personal plan only has access to three timeline views um, and a team um, workspace only has access to five. And then if you want unlimited, you need to upgrade to the enterprise plan. So um, yeah. Uh, that was that you know decisions that, that they made at their end, but the the limits don't seem to be hard, so you can sort of get away with it for now. But they may enforce them at some point, in which case you might have trouble. So yeah, because obviously in a build like this, there's a timeline view inside every project, um, as well as this original one. So if you used my template, you'd be over the limit <laughs> straight away. Uh, anyway. Look at the cheat sheet. Yeah. Um, and then finally in the crypto workspace, um, so this is a workspace, uh, like a template that I built um, that I spend way too much time in. And uh, what I've done here is I've, give, I've created, this has got several databases in it, um, but I wanted to show you, I've used rollups to create the dates um, that the timeline view uses. So this is the trades database. And so every time I decide, okay, I'm gonna make this trade and I do the research and I work out, you know, where, where I want the entry point to be and where I, you know, want it, the target to be, um, I kind of do all that work. And uh, let's have a look at, this is not real. Well, it's not all real. It's bits and pieces of real info scattered through here. But here's um, like, the Bitcoin trade, if you like, and it's got a whole bunch of maths and other things. But you can see here, there's a whole lot of transactions that happen over a period of time. Um, I think they range like from August till about now. And so they're not in any particular order there. But what I've done in the trade database that this is related to is I've put two rollups in. So I've got a rollup that says, show me information from the transactions database and I want the property date, but give me the earliest date from all those transactions. And then another property that says, give me the latest date from all those transactions. So if you're not familiar with rollups, they're super powerful. And when you have a relation between two databases, you're then able to create a rollup property and bring information from the database that you're related to across into this database and the calculate section of the rollups allows you to perform math or do cool things like pick the latest date or pick the earliest date or um, yeah, you can have how big the range is. There's a few different things you can do. So we've used that uh, if we go back up into the workspace to create the timeline view. So this timeline view shows us um, the period of time that those trades ran for and if we go in to timeline by, you can see that the start date is based on the first transaction. 
and the end date is based on the last transaction. So even though I didn't strictly speaking have a start date and an end date, what it allowed me to do, and I could actually do this in the home reno um, one as well, is I could set the start and end dates of the of the projects based on um, roll ups from, uh, yeah, like this. So I thought that was pretty cool because then you're sort of able to step back and visualize, okay, over the course of the year, these are the different trades that I've made and this is how long they've run. You'll notice that I didn't put in the percentage of profit and loss because that is a sad, embarrassing story. Um, but super useful to be able to just take that time-based information and visualize it in a completely different way. That was something we couldn't really do in Notion before. And I think that's the biggest value that the timeline view brings us. All right. I think, I think that was all I wanted to share about how, how the timeline view works. Yes. Um, we do have a, we do have a question from Dragon. Oh, um, yeah. And uh, it's about the limits. So Dragon's asking, how is this timeline limit defined? Um, like three times, uh, you said five timelines, was it? Was it from the yeah. same database or it's like five um, separate? No, it's, it's five instances of the timeline view. So it is as restrictive as you, as you could imagine uh -huh. that could be interpreted. So uh, yeah, if you've got one database and that database has a timeline view, that's one. If you create a linked version of that database and you create another view in that linked version that is a timeline view, that's two. Um, so it's every instance of the timeline view. I, I, I sought clarification about it early on because I thought, mm, you know, <laughs> is there any wiggle room here? <laughs> Could we find a way around it? But it, I, I think it really is every instance of the timeline view. Um, but my experience so far is that they're not, those limits are not hard set. So I think they're, they're trying to work out, you know, whether that's going to work or not. Um, yeah. I don't love it because I think um, some people's use cases will lend uh, themselves to like want to use the timeline view a whole lot more. Yeah. Um, so like the farm, you know, um, workspace I'm building at the moment, they'll, they'll use it heaps um, and it'll be really powerful and it will make the tool like a, a whole lot more useful for them. But other clients I have, like I work a lot with law firms and I just can't find a use case for the timeline view at all. So I don't yeah. think they're ever going to use it. Yeah. Um, but they love the tables, man. <laughs> the tables get a thrashing. And so to have one view that is kind of limited, um, you know, and then another view that's not limited just seems a bit unfair. Um, so I, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I think about it. We'll see. They're obviously a business who's trying to work out how to make money and how to provide, you know, good value in their product. So they've got to pay the bills too. My suspicion is that um, because timeline is a very different visualization, mm -hmm. um, and like already, we already see like a lot of complexity into the, the thing itself. Like we have extra drop down, we have way more rows, and each one actually takes. Um, horizontal space a lot. It might have something to do with performance and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Theory, <laughs> theory. Yeah. yeah. One other um, point that is I noticed might be hard to see here. The timeline view does something different with the space. So if you've got a page, this one's not. But let's make it. Let's make it the small width. Oh, now it's lying. <laughs> I thought the timeline view, maybe it's behaving differently in the browser, automatically took up the full width of the, of the, um, of the page regardless. Maybe it's because um, you enlarge the page. Could yeah. be because of that. Yeah, my experience was it will automatically take the full page as well. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it looks quite different. Like it was sort of strikingly different from the other views when I first um, started playing around with it. Yeah. I can't make it do the thing I was thinking, so <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. Dragon, have you been using it? Uh, well, I'm experimenting. Uh, in my own use, I, I really don't do many projects uh, at the same time. It's yeah. going to be useful for 
the upcoming YouTube video posting because I'm going to start a uh, YouTube channel seriously. Uh, and I, I can see the use there, but I'm also working for for a nonprofit, and we have this uh, um, free uh, Notion license for like 500 people. Wow! Uh, and uh, now I'm just struggling with with the first part, which is uh, authorizations and who's the member, who's going to be the guest, which pages yeah. you have access to. It's it's so unclear with a Notion. But I know that, let's say, my own region, which is in south of Sweden, mm. we are like 50 people, around 50. And uh, we are going to be very, very happy if we can at least have these like five timelines for the main projects, for the goals. Yeah. Because we have like an activity plan. It's a database, which is a bas basically projects that are for the mm -hmm. whole region and for every small unit of maybe two three five people who do something yeah, yeah. so a time a timeline can be very crowded but it can be filtered which yeah. is great so we could have one uh, database per uh, project one for uh, the goals of the whole organization mm. so i think we'll manage with like two three databases uh, which will be in timeline so for the moment i'm i'm settled it's okay and i have my own personal paid plan mm -hmm. uh, where i'm fine with the timeline view for youtube videos and maybe for some teaching if i do that online more than i yeah. did by now or whatever i think so, I mean, maybe I, I, hmm? I was gonna say like i always build where the databases are kind of tucked out of the way and so there's lots of linked views of databases and because of that um you know like in my personal workspace i mean my wife and i use it together and our kids use it and so we we would have like of our i don't know that we have a tasks database of our tasks database there would be maybe 10, maybe 15, like linked views of that spread out across the workspace, some in personal dashboards, some in like a family space. Um, I use it, for instance, in my weekly review, I have an embedded version of the linked, uh, like I have a sorry, linked view of, of the tasks database in there three or four times to show different elements that, that I want to review. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where we might get stuck with the with the limits, you know, if you I think Notion is wonderful because you can create like uh, a dashboard or a view just for a particular job, you know, just for a, just for one workflow yeah. and then another one for another workflow. And often when I'm building for, for clients, I say like, let's create a different page for each job that needs to be done. And we clear out all the rest of the clutter and you only see the things that you need. If those jobs require a timeline view, <laughs> you're going to reach those <laughs> limits really fast. Yeah. You know. uh, and I'm yeah, actually, uh, yeah, it's it's very interesting to see how they're gonna uh, deal with this uh, because there was a not a storm, but a lot of people, especially yeah. on Twitter, are like questioning like, why limitations. I mean, okay, uh, uh, Lennon has got the point when it may be it's resource craving of some kind when mm. they code the whole thing and I, I can understand that but, but basically I mean uh, there's a lot of competition breathing right in Notion's neck uh, and you have this little app called Craft uh, that came recently and uh, mm. I mean they, they should actually uh, spit out new options functions improvements for free to everybody because that's the way to keep themselves accountable right, and yeah. to stay in the yeah head of the game and and mm -hmm. I, I don't know I, I think it, it, it's a cheaty way of limiting uh, timelines maybe they could have said look we need to see how much this is going to uh, you know affect the performance or whatever so yes. we're going to limit it for some time yeah. and then to see what happens but but for the moment I I, I, I think as, as soon as you put a customer in a situation that I'm paying for something and at the same time I'm kind of limited in using it mm -hmm. either give me that function or don't give me <laughs> they, they, yeah they, they could have just limited it like okay in the free version there are three uh, uh, timelines because we want to give you the feeling of it and maybe you will buy and you know support mm -hmm. us that way or 
just get the timeline as many times as you want if you're paying. Yeah. Yeah. So like I, would, I wonder, we're also not used to it. We haven't been limited in other ways. You know, there's not other... There's no other yeah. spaces in the tool where it says, oh, you can only have three of these or, you know. Yeah, exactly. So I think that it's a bit jarring for, for that reason because it's sort of a different approach to um, scaling. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, there's a big jump too between the team plan and the enterprise. It's like double the cost, you know. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Lynn, I, 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 I think there is probably a backstory that um, because I work in the IT industry, I probably can emphasize with it a little bit more that um, both Tim and I know that Timeline has been in the making for a long time. And I think there is a reason why they choose to ship this version of it. And like in, in our industry, minimal viable product is very important. And this is definitely like, I have no doubt Notion is gonna improve on whatever feature they're working on. Mm -hmm. um, we can see that with this batch of release, they introduce hiding property to the tables and stuff. So. Yeah. With original functionality, they are doing improvements, and and just because you mentioned like um, products mm. like Craft um, are like getting up the game, so um, I, I think they they are making like executive decision on to okay, we need to release this um, feature mm. before we lose to these yeah. other competitors. That's my <laughs> guess, though. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's a tough game. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I'm really interested to see um, like more use cases. You know, like oh, yeah. the 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 you know the first two I demoed, like they're really like that's always what you think of Gantt chart, you know, project planning and whatever. But I was thinking about this and yeah, started realizing, hey, it would be nice to be able to visualize this other information that I've got. And you know, you don't think about trades as a project plan, but to be able to take something that does have a date and step back and look at it over time, um, especially when you're reflecting or like I'm just experimenting with trading. I've never done it before, so I've been learning a lot this year. It's helpful to have a project in uh, lockdown. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, like to be able to visualise your information, I think we, yeah, if people think outside the box a little bit, we might see some really um, fascinating use cases for the timeline that you just wouldn't normally imagine. Um, I just I just had a thought that we can we can actually make it a horizontal bar chart tool now if we think about the time um, yeah. if we get rid of the time as the x axis let's imagine that's unit and then because we can add these numbers or whatever thing we want to add onto each of the strip so then we can create formula um, convert a, a certain number using time right we can say yeah. um, let's say the unit is um, I don't know, kilogram. Um, yeah. And then uh, let's say every half an hour, that length of it means one kilogram. And then we can start to visualize different things. And we can literally just put one kilogram on that bar. So although the timeline is still there, you start to using it for entirely different purpose. Right. Yeah. That would be great. That would be really fun. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because there's no, you know, there's no graph. There's no... Exactly. Um, and it is, yeah, I mean, the gallery is pretty, but this is the most useful visualization tool we've got so far, I think. Um, I, I really like, too, how you can interact with it. You know, one of the things just working with users a lot is that they love boards, Kanban boards, because you can pick things up and move them around, you know, has that real tactile kind of feel to it. Um, people seem really drawn to. And this is the same. You can... You know, you can stretch out your events to increase the time. You can exactly. kind of move, move them around. Yeah. Um, that adds a whole nother dimension. I, I haven't checked it out, but it probably doesn't translate fantastically to mobile. Um, it would be interesting to see. That would be a, mm -hmm. another 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 episode maybe. But um, It looks yeah. fine on an iPad. iPad is fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Just yeah. you need the real estate. You need the space. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Not on a mobile. I don't think so. No. Nah. I have and to get I one of those massive phones. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. The, the the folding one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I think also um, uh, observing from products like Asana or other um, typical product management or project management tool, um, mm -hmm. they had you can incorporate different states onto the same timeline. Like you can set this was the original one, how much overage I had onto something, yeah. and to color the spa differently. Like 
um, what's over is red, what's still on track is green. That's probably something they're looking into while yeah. we're speaking. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of scope for it. I yeah. guess maybe that is too partly why they're, you know, they want to make it more of an enterprise level feature. Um, yeah. Because if they just improve the base version to be able to do more sophisticated things like that, it, it becomes more of an enterprise tool at that level. Maybe we need a baby version and a advanced mm -hmm. version, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just for us, you know, chumps who are not in enterprise exactly. land. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, this this wakes another. Uh, well, not the elephant in the room, but but uh, let's say if I'm I'm creating uh, these first databases for my region at this organization, mm -hmm. I work with, and I'm I'm thinking of timelines of projects and goals or whatever we have that are let's say aimed only for the leadership, but not for their for the you know just average. Sure. Yeah. employees yeah. and uh, yeah. that that needs to be uh, on a certain page that you share only with these or those people but yeah. at the same time if, if you create uh, a linked view of that database mm. some and, and you put it in the page that's maybe shared with everybody mm. then maybe they can also see it and so, so I'm, I'm gonna try to investigate how deep uh, is this sharing feature connected to I guess timeline will act the same as anything else from that database it's just a yeah another view. yep but it's, it, yeah I mean, that's I, right I, yeah I have big problems with, with with the sharing stuff because if I put a member into this workspace they just all of a sudden had access to everything uh, and that's not good so I'm, I'm now removing people and removing pages, making them only private, and then I'll start from scratch to see how it yeah. actually works. And I'm, I'm reading this uh, kind of uh, in, in the help files in Notion, okay. how it works with the sharing. Uh, uh, yeah. The uh, levels of permission. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but yeah. It's, it's, it's very cumbersome. I, I really, maybe I'm not that computer literate or whatever, but <laughs> if they want to sell you a product that's kind of non coding, blah, blah, it would be just the easiest way to just I don't know mark a page and to just put a list of everybody who's in this workspace and then just say okay he can do it she can do it she cannot do it she can, I mean it has a system and a structure to it that um like because obviously I'm building uh, workspaces for for businesses and so it's often a question like at the management level particularly something yeah. like HR you know okay we want to have an open system, you know, and you, and you watch all Notion stuff and they're very open, you know, as a company, right. everyone can mostly see everything. Um, and then anything HR, you know, or, or sort of individual specific pay or, you know, contracts or things like that, they use the, um, the sharing feature. So it's not in the workspace central. It's in, you know, say the manager's private space and then they share it directly with the, the user that it's relevant to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I sure. find now what I have to do is when I'm coming up with the structure for the build initially, you know, we have to think through all the permissions uh, and work out which information are you happy for everyone to see? Okay, that's the only stuff that can live inside the workspace section on the sidebar. Um, anything that you're not happy for everyone to see, that has to live in a private space and then be shared. And it can be shared with a group of people so you can do kind of what you're what you're asking for. You can create groups and you can say, okay, this is management. And then you you put things, you know, stuff gets created and then it's set to the permission mm -hmm. management. And then everyone in management can see it, but everyone outside can't. But it can't be living in the workspace section. As soon as you move things into the workspace section, then they're available to everyone. Yeah. And it's available to all who are both members and guests, whatever. Yeah. But then if you go to a particular page and see let's say this page has sharing option to everybody in the workspace mm -hmm. or all members but then you can from that page uh, cut them off if you want and then add uh, certain people but I'm not I don't understand if they need to be members or or guests so, so how we should do uh, Okay, this doesn't have too much with the timeline to to do. This is Action. more of a basic no notion thing. Yeah, yeah. Some, that's okay. Some, I don't know. If, yeah, but basically, yeah. I'm wondering. Maybe that's if, changed since the you know, like just recently they updated. You can have 
um, you can have a public page and then inside the public page you can set more granular permissions yeah. on pages inside that. Yeah. I haven't what? played with it enough to know if inside the workspace section you could do that for your own members. I know that you can do it when a page is shared externally, yeah. but I don't. I wouldn't imagine that they've messed with if it's in the workspace, it's it's available to everyone, and if it's not, then it's not. Yeah. Well, it says uh, here on, on my screen. I'm just looking mm. at it. Mm. Uh, I went to a page that is uh, within. Uh, no, let's see. Let's see this one. Okay. Uh, share, and then you have this menu of share to web, which is not ticked. Yeah. Uh, and it says everyone at census my organization has yeah. full access but i can just click on that and and write no access and uh, it uh, tells me to move it to private so that's the only way as yeah. you said so it's yeah, still right. that that yeah. option that is the only i think possible. they'd need to do that it would get super confusing if you had yeah. things that were shared that were inside the workspace that weren't available to all workspace members mm -hmm. um They'd need to have a whole other interface for managing the sharing permissions. Um, yeah, but if you're happy to work with yeah. the, everything in the workspaces for everyone, and then if when you're building, you think, okay, these things need to be not shared with everyone, then they just don't go in the workspace. Yeah. The bit that you yeah. can struggle with is if you have data where you want to store it in a database and you want people to be able to see a view of that information, like a high level summary, for instance, but say not the details, a budget is a perfect yeah. example, you know? Yeah. So you, you want to have a budgeting database. You want to share one view with the team and then have the details for management. There is no way to do that no. because if they can see I, the database, yeah. even a linked view of it, they can see the whole thing. Yeah, I understood that. Uh, yeah. There is also this other aspect of, okay, you can, you can have everybody see everything, which is okay because we are transparent. But uh, I wouldn't want everybody to be able to click and just move the properties or, or, yeah. or change something or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 50 people with different levels of understanding mm. what you're doing there. And yeah. they say, oh, I don't want to see this here. I want this there. So I need to prepare everything uh, ahead for everybody, for each team, yeah. own dashboard, linked bases, databases, views, whatever, project management. It's, it's like... A, Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big thing and uh, yeah, it's, it's its own for, project <laughs> yeah and for, for the really moment I'm, I'm the only one who's really really interested in this because everybody loved the way a notion worked when I showed it to them yeah. on a kind of regional meeting but then you know when, when I started explaining how it's done it's, a, it's like oh you lost me there you lost me there because <laughs> we're dealing with a you know it's a non-profit organization it's people who are very engaged in that kind of Mm. Uh, you know, uh, uh, work, but they are not so computer literate, and they're what they know is kind of you know Office, Microsoft Office, and yeah. Word, Excel, and that's it. So the only analogy you can give them is like a well, Notion is like databases are like Excel files. Oh yeah, right, yeah. So that's you know what I've had a bit of success with working, like I I have to decide early on. Am I going to use Notion to build a tool for these people to use? And really, in their mind, like, they think that Notion is that tool. Like, yeah. when I've worked with a bunch of law firms who put their hand up and say, we're not tech people, we don't understand this stuff, you know, but we want to be able to do this. Notion is a platform that I've been able to build a tool for them in, but I never teach them how to use Notion. No. I don't teach them how blocks work. I don't, you know, because they just need to learn how that particular tool works. Mm. And, you know, you press this to make it happen. And they almost wrote learn things um, mm. versus I'm, I'm working with some other businesses. And when I finish the project, I want them to be able to continue to change it and grow it and make it better. And they get yeah. stuck, they can give me a ring, you know. And it's a really different way of like for those guys, I've, we fully explain how it's built and why we've chosen to do this. And um, and they're, they're interested because they, you know, they need to understand it. But I think if you take the mindset that basically I'm making them a tool, I'll teach them how to use that tool and, and that will be their experience of Notion. Um, that's worked pretty well, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's simpler and it's a bit frustrating because they don't end up with the power, you know, and, and I like how it empowers people. Yeah. yeah. 
I think I'm 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 there now. Uh, I'm just right. trying to to show them nice views of information that's familiar to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's always like that. You, you try to implement a new tool or app in an organization. Everybody yeah. thinks, oh shit, I, I need to learn a new app now. And how does that work? How does that work? But basically, I just describe Notion as 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 a kind of umbrella, kind of uh, kind of uh, a view or or a curtain before everything else that we already use yeah. because in Notion you can link to every sort of information you have anywhere else. Yeah. Google Drive, we have our own servers for stuff, we have a great wiki that's already done so I don't want to do make it in Notion. For nah, sure. reason, right? Yeah. So we're just going to make some wonderful dashboards with linked information from different places so all Notion needs to be for them is a, like a nice whiteboard like a, yeah. A place yeah, sure. that's really calming and okay here I am I see everything in one window which is a great advantage of Notion mm. um, because mm. not having to leave. Blocks, yeah and you can really place things on the different parts of, of, of the this space that's visible yeah. and uh, for some people it's it's enough with one dashboard only and just click and go back click yeah. and go back yeah 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 right now uh, Lennon someone's raised their hand which I've never seen in a Zoom call, but that's pretty. I don't know what that means. Hi. Hey. Hi. How are you going? Hi. Welcome. Hi, I'm well. I'm well. Thank you. My name is Simone Gile. Oh, I'm very. actually in South Africa in a place called East London, uh, oh. Southeast Coast. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm an entrepreneur here, and I discovered Notion and I love it. But uh, I think I identify with a lot of word dragon. Is that how you say it? Dragon, right? Yeah. I identify yeah. with your challenges around getting everyone else excited. Mm. One thing that I've found uh, to be a, a benefit for the team is the whole idea of the global search. So I think yeah. people at any given time know what they need. And uh, since I founded this company that I'm running and we've been running now for nine years, I've always tried to document things, but no one really knew where things were. Yeah. So that was the excitement around uh, Notion that I could document things and everyone could find them, but no one has the same passion as I have with it. And as a result, uh, people still need information, but the whole idea of saying now you need it, now just search for what you need and you'll yeah. find it. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that because mm. uh, great, it's been great. a great benefit for me to know that oh, everything is out of my head and yeah. onto paper and it's actually so great. powerful on that front, isn't yeah. it? You know, really, because yes, yes. there's a lot of well, talk, you know, uh, like you write everything down, you know, uh, make it accessible to people, you know, but often the tool gets in the way and yeah, it's there somewhere. It's in Google Drive. You know, <laughs> good luck. Um, yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot of benefit. So, have you found, have you stored um, all that information in a way that people can navigate by sort of clicking through, or have you just popped it all in a database somewhere and said just search for it and you'll find it? I, I did various variations of it and ended up the latest one is a dashboard now, a very yep. simple dashboard. Yeah. Uh, that shows uh, the key areas around uh, who we are, you know, marketing. Uh, we're, we're a co-working space, uh, okay. a flexible office here in East London. Mm. And, uh, but my past life is as a management consultant in Toronto. Okay. So, so there's, there's various facets. So uh, having started this business about nine years ago, now what you find is sometimes there's, you know, someone needs the logo, someone needs uh, some yeah. marketing related material or also client related material. But now what I'm trying to get into is where our client information, each client has a dashboard. Yeah. So um, it, I'm, I'm a bit challenged with that because mm. we hold client templates and mm. uh, sometimes they reside in people's computers and there's no standardization around that. Mm. So now we're just trying to say for each client having uh, their own templates and stuff like that. Yep. But uh, just the operationalization of the business, having different people come in and do things differently. So yeah. mine, uh, ours has been just from uh, client calls, how we handle a client call, how we handle a client visit, 
And yeah. uh, so it's been really around just creating that template so that if someone needs something, it's all within reach. And what projects are we focusing on at the given time? Mm. And if, where are those? So I've been, I'm, unfortunately, the only one who's been updating these. Everyone else has a, has a display view. Yeah. Uh, so because it's, it's, it's business related information, them having a view of the bigger database, I don't have a problem. Mm. But it's just from the temp, from the desk, from the dashboard standpoint, just for them to see what uh, they have access to and how we can search through the whole maze of information. Yeah. But I actually haven't used the the timelines that you, okay. you were mentioning yeah. because I'm just trying to grapple with all these other things. But yeah, no, this, what you've showed me is something you know I'm excited about it because sometimes it's having to see things differently and uh, yeah well and i think if you've already got a whole lot of data in there and you're using it um mm -hmm. like the timeline becomes like quite exciting at that time because y you've already got kind of working information and you switch it on and it uses all the data that's already in the in the database you know it's one of the things i love about when they release a new feature it's not like you have to go and start from scratch you know just create yourself mm -hmm. a timeline view and choose you know which properties you want it to relate to and bang it's working and it's full of all your content and um yeah that'll be exciting to see how you use it thank you thank you yeah and this thank time uh this uh time works perfectly for me like it's almost <laughs> noon right now so okay. I okay i can still do it i <laughs> can still do it uh, great we're gonna have to change our name i think from notion australia to uh <laughs> to notion Global or something? Global, yeah. No, yeah. Global. no, no, no. no. D don't change the name. Just uh, uh, maybe change in the statement of we are, let's say, uh, uh, a space for Australian and uh, related time zones, people or whatever. I mean, it's, it's, you, can, you can say that we are in this time zone. I, I don't know. Just, just, just make it more uh, accessible for everybody else because I, I find this extremely inspiring and and uh, you know you guys have so much knowledge about this and uh, for me it's, it's a great learning opportunity yeah it's really fun we enjoy it yeah it's nice to, yeah, yeah. Uh, I so, oh so we, sorry Jagan I, I was just gonna check if you, ha you have ever noticed on the right hand side of the notion toolbar um, there's a settings and members tab yeah and if you go to members, mm -hmm. um, you can set up groups and you can even see underneath guests tab, what are the pages that they have access to. Um, I, I just wonder if that might be any help to you. I, I just realized I've, that just now actually. I've, I've, be, I've been there and okay. uh, I've been there and I uh, have, let's say members, I've created uh, one, two, three, four, five, six group, no, five groups. Nice. for the moment yeah but the my, my problem is basically that if I, as as tim said as, as soon as you have a, a a page that is in the workspace which is shared right yeah uh everybody has no matter which group they're in uh, i put them in and they're members so i'm i'm thinking now of maybe just removing people and then making them guests mm. to see if the, if they when they log in when they start using it do they really see everything again? Because I can they're, they're I can is... clear that one up. So what will happen mm -hmm. is when you add them as a guest, you have to add them to a page. So if yeah. you add them to the top page in the workspace, they will be able to see everything underneath it. Yeah. But if you add them to a sub page in the workspace, then they'll only see what's underneath that. So. That is a way to get around it. And guests surprisingly have like, they can do most things, you yeah, know, really. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. I've had a couple of clients that have been a little skint for cash. And uh, <laughs> so instead of, you know, all 20 of them having their own user, um, we just we just created like two or three who are going to do all the work and build it and be the champion, you know, um, and yeah. and then the other users they're just all guests and so effectively they're running like a full team, you know, and it would cost them I don't know two hundred bucks a month or whatever for everyone to have an account, but actually they're only paying for sort of you know a team plan for three people, um, and and that works really well. So that might be the answer, mm. Dragon. Yeah. Like you might be able to work out. How to, but, how to structure your workspace so that they can only see the bits they need to. Yeah, 
because there there are, let's say I've had pages in a workspace I have spa uh, pages which is called uh, shared section yep. Yep. and then they're private so yes. these I, I just don't see what's the difference between a workspace and a shared because the shared page if I look at that one it says nobody has access but this didn't put me into uh oh as soon as you have one of the members ha having access to this yeah. page and you disable everybody else yeah uh it comes to the shared section so how a, yeah, yeah that's right so a shared page is any private page that's shared between multiple workspace members but uh, not all yeah workspace yeah members. yeah yeah because it, it, there's this uh, everyone at this organization is uh, one group that I created so I disable that now well okay let's not take up the time from this discussion sure. I'll, I'll, I'll have to work with it uh, I'm yeah. more than happy to come come back with with some more info how it went but uh, I mean, yeah, man. yeah well uh, if you get stuck it's, it's give us a holler yeah. Yeah, but yeah. see, Bungile, it's fantastic that you said this about the search for function because it's it's I think it's going to be uh, good to 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 build kind of uh, the confidence in Notion on while well, you can search for everything, you don't have to look for it, you don't have to yeah. click around, you just you know search for it and then you find it, which yeah. is great because it's still not so crowded in this space. Um, but the thing is that. A search function is also looking through the private pages and I don't know uh, if I search myself in in this space it will give me lots of results from the private pages yeah but, but no I'll one else will see that no one else will see that okay good no, because no, otherwise no. they'll be overwhelmed because I have like yeah. I don't know, I know 50 pages within the private were, were you know some yeah. inspirational stuff some templates some you know, whatever yeah you just have to make sure that the uh, titles of your pages are like hold enough content to make the search results meaningful you know so yeah. like a exactly. few times say working with law firm i've run into trouble where we have a huge database of ten thousand records in it and the uh, title of the page is the client's surname and so you search for jones you know there's 300 joneses and which which <laughs> which file is it you know yeah, so exactly. we so we you know we had to build into our workflow okay we put the surname plus the file number in the title yeah. field of the page once we adopted that then it was every time you know you could just search for the number and bang you would have it in a heartbeat yeah and uh exactly. and don't forget it's uh command p or control p um to bring it up real search. fast that yeah. that that shortcut all day i think uh, i've almost worn my p key out just by <laughs> yeah yeah quick access to the search yeah nice i guess we better wrap up lennon we're gonna blow our time yeah. online on the timeline <laughs> <No? Some matter. laughs> <Pun puns>. yeah <laughs> look great puns yeah <laughs> too many children <laughs> dad jokes everywhere <laughs> no, no, you, you've been watching Tom Buck on, on, on YouTube, I guess, because he's got puns everywhere. He's like, he, <laughs> he wouldn't dare to use them in the beginning, but now he's on like 40, 50,000 subscribers. Now he got really loose with that. So he, he's got puns all over the place. It's great. That's great. It's oh, well, thank you, for, thank you for sharing this with us, asking questions and love having those kind of chats. I think they're really useful. Yeah. Great. I'm going to thank. thank you so much. Thanks. Right. All right. See you guys next time. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. See you later. Thank you. Bye, Abhishek. Good to Bye. see you. Thanks for coming. Thanks a lot for sharing. Bye. All right. Nice. Amazing. Um, that stopped the live recording. Yeah, I'm trying to. Oh, stop the stream. <laughs>